and yeah, this is this is Spenny and Indy Gold, and this has been uh, a hell of a workshop. We're learning all the vital lessons we need to kind of propel ourselves and move forward. So this has been beautiful. I thank Big Ticket and all the connections that have been here this evening. This has been a blessing. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's not enough of this going around. Uh, where good people come in for literally not a dime and uh, teach you things that you have not learned otherwise or might even be in the industry for, for years before you actually learn the things that these guys took the time out to teach us today. So as a, as, as a manager in this business, it's tremendous to see. It's great for uh, my artists and uh, other people that I represent to, to have things like this. And we just want to say thank you to Big Ticket and, and, and um, Chris Jackson and uh, Trisha and uh, Tricia, I apologize, and as well as uh, Gabrielle, and, Gabrielle Click and, and Click and everybody that came out and everybody that came out here made this experience uh, tremendous. It was great, so we appreciate it. Hopefully I'll have another one. So having said that, we're going to get started. I'd like to introduce my big ticket partners, Tracy Carey, who's been with me from day one, and she's very instrumental along with Gabrielle Rubin, who it was actually her idea to put this workshop on. When actually born strangers, they're good at leveraging a lot of the relationships that they come across. So for example, they have um, Legends needs clothing, clothing apparel. They're all branded together. They work together, and it brings them a bigger um, following. So it's leverage the people you work with. It means that you support them too. You check out what they're doing. They check out what you're doing. You support them in what they're doing. Let's take advantage of different relationships in the industry. I encourage everybody to to register themselves as a company because it gets you into the flow of conducting yourself like a professional. Learning how to use a budget is a great tool. Taking those little steps will open up so many more doors to you. But I actually teach um, a management course at Metalworks. So one of the first things I want to get into is um, knowing myself. It's really crucial before you go to a manager that you know thyself. That you know, not what I mean thyself, like you know the type of artist you want to be. Because if you know who you are as an individual, the branding that you create for yourself is going to be top notch and you're going to feel comfortable walking out with the pictures, with everything that's being put out there, the type of songs you're going to create when you go into the studio, all are direct mirror reflection of who you are. You know? And managers want to work with people who know themselves. But is there a difference between a manager and a booking artist? Because I find that a lot of artists get mad at their manager because they're not playing live shows. The difference between a booking agent and a manager is a booking agent's job is 24-7 trying to get you gigs. You know, be it on festivals, maybe corporate gigs, maybe bars, pubs, whatever it is, that's their job. And a manager's job is working with the booking agent to, um, you know, find the proper rooting for that tour, to align what is the proper gig, what is the proper room, what is the proper support slot. If you're, you know, opening up for a certain artist, is that the right fit for the artist? Yeah. I could see a real potential for a hip hop and R&B booking agency in this country. There is none. You have to, have to, have to be persistent. Do not give up. Believe in yourself, mostly. I wrote a 
personal letter, just a heartfelt letter saying that, you know what, I am here to make music. You know what I mean? Like, if you guys believe enough in me to give you that money, I will not let you down. Hi, my name is Allison. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Factor. We fund everything in the music business from your very first demo, we fund albums, we fund tours, we fund record labels directly, artist managers, we fund big events, huge big events like the Junos and Canadian Music Week, and we fund uh, very small ones like this event today. It seems crazy to me that hip hop is like the biggest, most popular genre of music like in the world basically, including Canada, but there's the support for it just isn't there. Like it's not there on radio, it's not there in the industry. It's not there with funding agencies as much as it could be. The artist development program, that $2,000, you can spend it on recording if you want to. You can spend it on a tour, on a showcase, on making videos, on marketing and promotion for something that you've already put in, that you've already got out there. So it's like super flexible. We basically say that you've got a year to spend this money. Come back to us after a year and tell us what you did. Factor never funds anything at 100%. And what I mean is, we expect all of you to make an investment in the thing that you're doing. And so what we will do is we'll cover 75% of your costs. Now, why am I here today? I'm here specifically to talk to you about entertainment law, entertainment lawyers, why you need one, okay? When you need one, and what we do. This is the music business. So you've got to have a team. Your lawyer and a team you can trust, right? And your accountant you can trust, all right? Today's day and age, you need somebody who understands digital, all right? All the digital marketing, all that kind of stuff, because we are in a digital world. And that allows you to do what you do best, whether it's be an artist, whether it's be a promoter, whether it's be a manager, whatever it is, you need that team. Music does not make money. I'm sorry, I'm gonna tell you, music does not make money in today's day and age. Today you must have a brand. You've got to have a brand. Drake is a great example of that, the OVO brand. And I deal with artists that are signed to his label and guess what they're taught? They must have their own brand. All these other things make money through the music. Because the music is a way for a person or a company or an entity to associate itself with a group of people. And understand that your music is a way for you to connect with an audience and then do, guess what? Sell them something else. Sell them your shirt, sell them your hat, sell them your autobiography, sell them your headphones. I don't, whatever it is, sell them that because they're not gonna buy your music because they can get it for free. The songwriting, it's a different basket. You beat makers, guess what, you're a songwriter. This is where you make your money. You may be able to get an endorsement deal. Endorsement deals are changing. All those tweets and stuff that you get from people who have 500,000 or a million, you get 500,000 followers, you can get a company that's gonna bring products to you. Okay. And say, listen, tweet about this one, five grand. Or here's another one, three grand. And you may do 15 or 20 of those a year as opposed to that one 50,000 or 100,000 <coughs> deal that you used to do once a year. So this whole game is changing right here as well. You know, if you're a performing artist, then that's what you do well. You don't, you know, stay in the studio, make some music, do what you do well, surround yourself with others that do this well. Read the paperwork. You guys are the artists, I'm the label, all right? This is what I'm gonna say, I like your music, I like you, I'm gonna sign you today. I've got, maybe I've got distribution, or I'm gonna put $10,000 into your marketing or whatever it is I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sign you today. And in the contract it says, today's the day that we signed the contract and it's your job to bring me music now that I like, that I can put out, because I'm gonna put money behind it. So maybe within three months, you are supposed to deliver this music to me delivered it to the label. It is not considered delivered unless it is technically satisfactory and commercially satisfactory. Technically satisfactory, you bring in the engineer, they listen to it, it's mixed, it's mastered, it's great. It's technically satisfactory. Commercially satisfactory, you know what that means? I like it. <laughs> Until it's commercially satisfactory to me, okay, you have not delivered it. Therefore, that three months becomes four months. 
That fourth month becomes five months, and it goes on and on and on. You want to achieve things? What is your big picture? What is the end result you want to see? See that end result, believe that end result, and then work backwards from there. And if you work backwards, before you know it, you'll be there, and it's going to happen. Just do your thing. If you, if you do your thing long enough, you will become the popular shit. If you're a real artist, it's going to happen. You just have to believe it.